93-year-old resident of Stonecrest died Monday morning, two days after he and his wife were struck by a Lexus SUV driven by a villager. Edward Mann of a retirement community in Summerfield died at 7.52 a.m. Monday at Central Florida Regional Medical Center in Center in Ocala. His wife, 84-year-old Marilyn Mann, died Saturday night at the same hospital. They were injured when they were struck by a 2017 Lexus RS 350 driven by 89-year-old Wilfred Maybe at 4.15 p.m. Saturday at Winn-Dixie at Spanish Springs. The couple had been walking in the market crosswalk in front of the grocery store when Maybe's vehicle made a left turn and accelerated rapidly for an undetermined reason. His vehicle continued on and struck a flower bed. The investigation is continuing and no charges have been filed at this time. A village of Summerfield man was arrested after he was caught driving at a high rate of speed. Sean Howard Brennan, 49, who lives at 3225 Shelby Street, was driving a black Dodge Challenger at about 11.30 p.m. Saturday on U.S. Highway 27 and 441 when he was caught on radar traveling 72 miles an hour in a 45-mile-an-hour zone. During a traffic stop, a police officer discovered that the native New Yorker's driver's license had been suspended in 2020. The computer check also revealed that Brennan has seven previous convictions for driving while license suspended. Seven. And he just they just keep letting him go and it's eight. They let him go and then it's nine. I don't get it. He was arrested on a felony charge of driving while license suspended. He was booked at the Lake County Jail and released again after posting a two thousand dollar bond. I just think the law should just get tough. I mean really tough. A village of Della Vista North woman was arrested with a pair of drugs and a gun in her vehicle. Stephanie Nicole Williams, 37, who lives at 604 San Marino Drive, was at the wheel of a blue Toyota at about noon Saturday when she nearly caused an accident at Eagles Nest Road and Lake Unity Road, according to an arrest report from the Lake County Sheriff's Department. During a traffic stop, it was determined that she was driving on a suspended license and has been classified as habitual traffic offender. This just seems to be all the time. Eric Mary Culture, Culture, 46 of Lady Lake, was traveling as a passenger in the vehicle. He had narcotics and drug paraphernalia in, in her purse. Paul Eugene Hams, 48 of Bellevue, was in possession of a black Glock 26 9mm handgun with an extended magazine. He is a convicted felon. So back to jail, you go. All three were taken into custody and booked at the Lake County Jail. Well, keep them. Just keep them there. They don't care. We don't care. A drunk driving suspect was arrested after crashing his sport utility vehicle in a roundabout in the villages. Sumter County Sheriff's deputies responded to a crash at about 9.30 p.m. Sunday in the roundabout at Morse Boulevard in Moyer Loop. Shane Scott, 31, had been driving the red 2018 Jeep Cherokee and claimed he had suffered a blowout. He and his wife appeared to be highly intoxicated, according to the arrest report. I hit a curb in the roundabout, he told deputies. He was trying to change the flat tire when deputies arrived on the scene. Shea agreed to participate in field sobriety exercises, and he had multiple indicators of impairment. He provided breast samples that re registered 0.212 and 0.205 blood alcohol content. He was arrested on a charge of driving under the influence and booked at the Sumter County Detention Center. He was released after posting a $1,000 bond. One of the things about drinking and driving that we were taught in a union meeting at the Teamster Hall, because they were very, very big on teaching us exactly what would make you over the limit with CDL license. Those of you that don't know, if, you, if you're if you a holder of a CDL license, it's a half of whatever the state is that you're in for legally drunk, which is mostly like 0.08. For us, the CDL license, it doesn't make any difference if you're driving a truck. If you hold a CDL license, it's 0.04. That is like, you smell a beer, you're 0.04. They had a quart jar full of pennies, a quart jar full of pennies. And they use this as an example. That, th that jar of pennies was your blood. They had a dime, one dime. He dropped it in a jar. He said, that is the alcohol you consume, that dime. Are you legally drunk? Well, to make a long story short, as they were trying to make a point, the answer was yes. Well, 
The overwhelmingly majority of their residents showed up to support the idea of a path which has been criticized thanks to a price tag which has ballooned since the inception. Many of those attending the meeting expressed their fondness for the walking path put to the developer south of State Road 44. They said that residents living north of State Road 44 deserve a similar amenity. George Bob Martin, past president of the village Burgers, and he used the trails down south but wants something closer to home. Those things are a 30 to 40, 35 minute ride for me, he said. Director of Recreation's Parks Department, John Rohan, my buddy, who said at least 30,000 people per year are using the Finney Natural Trails. Walking is a critical and paramount activity for residents who move to the villages, Rohan said. Two flowers of the village of Sunset Point, and she does not feel safe walking on a multimodal pass because many of the golf carts are not adhering to the 20 mile an hour speed limit. She said the street is not safe um, options either. We can walk on the street, but we've already had one person that I know of who has been killed while walking on the street. Flower said in reference to 68-year-old Joanne Marie Colonna of the village of Sunset Point, who died in 2018 after she was struck by a golf cart while out for a morning walk with friends. PWAC Chairman Don Wiley pointed out the rising cost of the project has raised eyebrows and unveiled a new nickname for the path, which would be only seven-tenths of a mile long. Wiley called it the Million Dollar Mile. He reminded the audience that the purchase of $352 million of amenities south of County Road 466 from the developer in 2016 came with the additional ongoing cost of upkeep for 23 golf courses, 69 pools, numerous recreation centers, postal stations, pickleball courts. That includes a recently approved $900,000 renovation of the Churchill Greens Executive Golf Course and a $300,000 roof replacement at Lake Miona Recreation Center. So basically, it's it's becoming a money issue. Also on that meeting, I don't, don't have it on here, but I read it on another news report that when they were arguing about the benefits of having that walking trail or not having the walking trail. Now, keep in mind, I'm not taking sides here, but the people that actually showed up to the meeting that was arguing for the trail were the people that live in neighborhoods around that trail. Nobody from Benny, nobody from my area, nobody from other different areas of the villages went to the meeting to have a say-so, really, of whether they wanted it or did, didn't want it. Now, that, that was our fault, but uh, just, just so you know, that's what happened. Only the people that were living around the trail that would probably make daily use of that trail showed up to the meeting. So obviously they want it. Here's something that happened a while back. I haven't heard any more about it until just now. It's about uh, some villages, villagers, voter fraud, and they were caught. Two villagers are heading back to civics class after both men cut deals to avoid more serious punishment in voter fraud cases. J. Richard Ketsick, 63, who lives at 5564 Henry Loop in the village of Monarch Grove, was charged with voter fraud in connection with the 2020 presidential election. The Manistique, Michigan native cast a ballot in Florida by mail on October 13, 2020. He also cast a second ballot in Michigan via absentee ballot, according to the arrest report. Charles Franklin Barnes, 64, who lives in the Callahan Villas in the village of Osceola Hills, will be signing up for the same civics class. He has obtained a carbon copy of the pretrial intervention deal as Ketsick. Barnes' primary address is in Milford, Connecticut. He has also been accused of casting more than one ballot in 2020. Joan Halstead, 72, of the village of Palo Alto, is facing a felony charge of voter fraud. A document on file in Sumter County Court indicates she cast a 2020 general election ballot on October 20th, 2020, in person in Sumter County. She also cast a second ballot New York by absentee. A motion hearing in her case is set for May 11 in Sumter County Court. John Ryder, 61, of the village of Virginia Trace, has cast his ballot in person during early voting October October 28, 2020, in Sumter County. He also cast a absentee ballot in New York, according to an arrest document. Ryder and his wife, Carol, purchased their home 2019 at 904 Moses Loop in the Villages. Is this just me? Who cares when they purchased their home? What the heck does that have to do? I get so frustrated with this stuff. Jen, he was arrested in December in Brevard County. His case is scheduled for a conference May 17th, also in the Sumter County Court. 
A villager has won permission to plant Florida-friendly landscaping to replace rock at his out-of-compliance rental villa. Victor Petruccelli has been ordered to remove decorative rock, which was put down without approval from the Architectural Reviews Committee at his rental property located at 2075 Thornton Terrace in the Broyhill Villas in the village of Bonnybrook. Last month, representative for Petruccelli, who is reportedly struggling with health issues, appeared before the ARC in a bid to remove the rock and replace it with Moss. That request was denied. Ann Smith, who is a friend of the representing Petrocelli, was back before the ARC on Wednesday morning. This time, her request was to put down perennial peanut. The perennial peanut is a variable ground cover that can be planted statewide and blooms all summer long with cheerful golden flowers, according to the University of Florida Extension Services. Some of the best features of perennial peanut are its resistance to nematodes, pathogens, and drought. Plus, it requires little for Fertilizer. Penicelli peanuts will flower best when in full sun, but it can also be planted in partial shade. Well, that's good for me to know, but I got an area that I'm wanting to tear something out, put something in there, and it sounds like what maybe what I'm looking for. The ARC agreed and will allow perennial peanuts to be put down at the villa. This will likely halt the deed compliance case Petrocelli has been facing. Last year, a New Jersey couple planted perennial peanuts at their home in the village of Santo Domingo at problems with their earlier version of friendly Florida uh, landscaping. Letter to the editor. I believe the Lake Miona walking trail will be an excellent use of funds for this area. The lake is beautiful, but currently you can only see a small portion of the lakes and the preserve. The current path there and now is about the only means to walk anywhere close to this side of the villages. So many people daily visit Lake Miona. It would be utilized continually. Let's not only develop the nice paths for the south end, but continue to improve the older sections too. That was sent in by Norma Wallace, a village of Virginia Trace. The developer has agreed to pay half of the cost to replace the failed under-drain systems at four villa communities in the villages. The failed under-drain systems are located in the Atwood Bungalows, Sawyer Villas, Callahan Villas, and Bell Glade Villas. The developer continues to be a strong partner, said Director of Property Management Bruce Brown. This is a great victory for the district. He said that over time, the under-drain systems have clogged with, with silt, causing complaints from residents about the deterioration and buckling of the streets and walkways. Those of you that live in the villa areas, you may want to check. Years ago, this is the way it was. I don't know in the newer areas that it's the way it is now. That's why I always say check that the streets in all the villa areas are owned by the developer. They're not public streets. He's agreeing to pay half, so he's dipping into our pockets again to fix something that he didn't do right from the very beginning. That's what I'm telling you about your golf cart trails down there in the far south. I've mentioned it over and over again, and I'm not going to mention much more. If you don't do something about it now, you're going to get a bill like we're doing right now for later for millions of dollars to fix all that. Better get somebody on it. Community Development District 10 supervisor ripped their chairman Thursday afternoon after failing to carry forward their wishes in a vote on the Lake Neona walk trail. CDD 10 Chairman Don Wiley, who also chairs the project-wide advisory committee, earlier this week voted in favor of the $730,000 walking path that will be seven-tenths of a mile long. Last month, CDD 10 supervisor unanimously blasted the trail project and indicated to Wiley they were not in favor of spending the money. In the PWAC meeting held Monday morning, CDD 11 supervisor Don Brozick cast the lone vote against the Lake Neona walking trail. He cited direction from his board, which also unanimously opposed the expenditure. I don't like the position you put me in on the board. You put us in a very bad position when you go up there and change your mind, said CDD 10 supervisor Steve Bova, pointedly addressing Wiley during the CDD 10 board meeting at Seabreeze Recreation Center. Wiley recently announced his candidacy for the Sumter County Commission attempted to defend himself by pointing out numerous residents showed up at Monday's PWAC meeting in support of the walking trail. The overall response from the residents was positive toward the project. It came down to the residents, Wiley said. CD10 Supervisor Christian Bradshaw said Wiley's reaction to the residents that showed up at P Monday's PWAC meeting was short-sighted. She added that most people of the people who attended the meeting were from Lake Neona area. Yeah, that's what I heard. Of course, they are going to be in favor of the walking path that's within a half a mile of them. She added that Wiley's vote did not reflect the opinion of the residents of CDD 10. 
which includes village of Hillsboro, yay, village of Atrium Dells, the village of Carrier, and the village of Dunedin, and Alden Bungalows, and the village of LaBelle, and the village of Osceola Hills. That was just like a bunch of boring information for you guys, wasn't it? He reminded Wiley of the board's desire to light the sign at the Hillsborough Pool and Postal Station at night. Bova originally raised the issue last year as a safety concern. I just want to say right, that there's no lights up at the Postal Station or anything, and that's where Sue, early in the morning, fell down, tripped on something we don't know what yet, and broke her ankle in two places and uh, tore a muscle loose from her knee and had to have surgery because it's not lighted up there at all. None of them. It ain't just ours, it's a lot of them. They're not lighted. And yet they keep saying it's a safety concern. Why don't you put a light up there then? I don't get it. I don't get it. How this place cheaps out on so much stupid stuff. This is the second time you have gone against the board's wishes, Boba said. He went on to ask that the minutes of the March CDD-10 meeting be tabled rather than approved because he let, he felt those meeting minutes did not adequately reflect the depth of his objections to the late Miona walking trail. Well, remember that house? They they were asking forgiveness um, for the uh, penalties. Last week, I said, boy, I'm surprised they didn't. Well, now they're back to... This, this stuff is like ping pong sometimes around here with these politicians. Community Development District 9 Board of Supervisors has delayed a decision on forgiving $5,350 of fines on a home in a decompliance case. The home at 828 Journey Lane in the village of Sanibel was the subject of a public hearing last year in front of the CDD-9 board. The home was owned by a Massachusetts couple. She died later that year. CDD-9 board has been scheduled to vote Thursday in a decision to forgive a $5,350 in fines at home. However, the board decided to delay the decision. Community District Board Three supervisors refused to forgive the $5,200 fine. That's funny. Up there it says $5,350 in fines. And here it says they refused to forgive a $5,200 fine at the home of the village of Bel, Bel Air. Supervisors complained the home had been flipped for a huge profit. Yeah, they did okay. I, I, that is true. I saw that. They did okay. And basically what he's saying is, you know, they got tons of money and we get none. So if they made tons of money, uh, we're going to continue. We're going to collect that fine. That's what you're saying. You got some. We want some. The Sunset Point Neighborhood Adult Pool will be getting some new furniture. By the way, whenever they change all the furniture out in all the rec centers, the regional rec centers or whatever, when I was an employee uh, working for the villages, there's a, I can't, I don't know where it is now, but there used to be a big building they had. All that furniture went in that big building. And then the employees of the villages, companies, and their families could go to there and they had first dibs to buy stuff. And uh, the price was just uh, super, super good. And everything in there almost looked brand new because nobody ever sat in it. So we got some. A 71-year-old villager has been jailed without bond after violating her probation in a golf cart drunk driving case. Janice Withrow Kempka, who lives at 3840 Fairfield Street in the village of Glenbrook, this past October was placed on probation for one year, loss of her driver's license for one month, and was ordered to perform 50 hours of community service. The St. Petersburg native was arrested July 23rd, 2021 after Sumter County Sheriff's deputies were called to Citizens First Bank at Southern Trace Plaza when a caller reported a suspicious person. A deputy arrived at the bank and found Kapka in a golf cart with the keys in the ignition. It appeared Kapka had been drinking and her movements were very slow and seemed lethargic. She provided breath samples that registered 0.149 and 0.153 blood alcohol content. Kapka had been ticketed January 21, 2021 on an open container charge after she was found to have a cup of wine in her lap in her golf cart at CVS on County Road 466 in the Villages. She paid $166 fine in that case. <laughs> a convicted golf cart thief has been accused of stealing $3,000 from his mother's safe while she was at church. Jonathan Ryan Couples, 36, of Fruitland Park, was arrested Thursday by Fruitland Park Police on charges of grand theft and criminal mischief after allegedly using a power drill to try and break into the safe of his home's mother. When the drill failed, he yielded entry to the safe. Couples picked up a hammer and banged away at the safe until it opened. He took $3,000 in cash from the safe. According to the rest report, Couples reportedly told a witness he wasn't going to be controlled anymore. 
The mother contacted the police and reported the theft on Wednesday. Couples borrowed a vehicle and drove to Georgia. He abandoned the car in Georgia and called his mother to come and pick him up. When they returned to Fruitland Park, Mom, you didn't. You actually went up there and picked him up. He, he borrowed a car from somebody. He didn't care about them. He just left it in Georgia somewhere for them to worry about now. He broke into your safe, stole money, and you went and picked your baby boy up. When they returned to Fruitland Park, police pulled over her vehicle and took couples into custody. He was booked at the Lake County Jail on charges of grand theft and criminal mischief. In 2018, couples was arrested in the theft of a golf cart from the Comfort Inn and Suites in the villages that had been rented by a visitor from Wisconsin. He pleaded no contest in the case and was sentenced to 120 days in jail. No hope for that boy. You know, there's no cure for some of these people after a while. There's just none. That's just the way they're always going to be. A village's team from Glenview Tennis Center placed second in the USTA Adult 65 and Over 7.0 Men's Sectional Championship held in Orlando last week. Yay, raw! Good going. The team was part of the USTA Men's Competition Team League representing USTA Florida Region 2, Marion County. The league consists of three teams, Fort King Tennis Center, Ocala, and two teams from Glenview. The Village's James team won the league with a 7-1 record, which qualified them for the sectional championships. The sectional championships there, six teams from various USTA Florida regions. The teams competing were Broward, Collier, Duval, Hillsboro, Pinellas, and the villages, uh, Marion. Marion be Marion County, I guess. So, very good. I don't read all that. Very good. You guys, uh, you know, be proud. Mold is growing on a home in the villages where the owners are deceased and the utilities have been shut off. The home located at 1380 Florence Path in the village of Liberty Park was the subject of a public hearing Friday morning for the Community Development District 5 Board of Supervisors. The complaint was received January 5 about the mold on the vinyl siding of the home. I get my house completely washed, completely washed, and it's $69. I get it done twice a year. There is no mold problem. $69. I am very sensitive to many residents that are getting past the point at which they have the capabilities to take care of something that invasive. The Garlics purchased the home in 2006 for $244,800. They were the original owners. Community standards noted that the Garlics property is being maintained by a property preservation company. The company claimed a work order had been put in in March 25. However, when community standards checked the home this week, the work had not been performed. This happened. Not just with them. This happens. If you're a snowbird, make sure you have a home watch company. I swear to you, you need a home watch company if you're not here six months out of the year. I know you got a guy hired that'll mow your grass. You got a guy hired that'll pick up the trash that's in your front yard, all this kind of stuff. But do they do it? You don't know that they do it. You just assume your neighbor will tell you. They might be on a two month long cruise. They're not even home. Hire a home watch person. That's the only person you can really depend on to keep an eye on your property when you're not here. CDD5 board voted to provide seven days for the property to be brought into compliance. If it is not brought into compliance, a $150 fine will be imposed to be followed by $50 daily fines until the property is brought into compliance. Elected officials and the villages are hailing steps being taken to end the fine forgiveness in deed compliance cases in Florida's friendliest hometown. <laughs> officials in Community Development District have been feeling the heat from residents unhappy with the forgiveness of thousands of dollars in fines at homes tied up in protracted deed compliance cases. Records show that in many cases, the homes are sold at a substantial profit and the fines are simply forgiven. Last week, the Community Development District 3 Board of Supervisors refused to forgive a $5,200 fine at a home in the village of Bel Air. That's been a woman who boasted she has the best lawyer in town has been entered a plea after allegedly expo exposing herself at a church in the villages. Katie Nicole Cui, 37, of Citra pleaded not guilty this past week at Lady Lake Court to charges of exposure of sexual organs and disorderly conduct. She remains free on $3,500 bond. She was involved in a car accident at about 2 a.m. March 19th, and her white Dodge Charger was found in a parking lot out of St. George Episcopal Church. There were vehicle parts all over the roadway, according to the rescue department from Lady Lake Police Department. 
Pooey had her blue jeans, shorts, and underwear down to her ankles as she was urinating in the grass. She could not stand up without assistance and asked the police officer if he wanted to see her underwear. <laughs> oh, these police guys, I swear, they could sit down and probably tell you stories for hours of things like this. I'd love to do it. Just talk to them for a while. Oh... She charged, she charged up the police officer several times. When the officer attempted to handcuff her cooey, she started to pull away. Well, that's always, that's always a good thing to do. I have the best lawyer in town, she bragged. A middleman living near the villages of Finney has gotten a break in the case involving the resale of stolen catalytic converters. Gerald John Johnson, 75 of 5115 Warren Springs Avenue in Wildwood, has been allowed to enter a, a pretrial intervention program that could enable him to avoid prosecution following his arrest last year on a felony charge of acting as an unregistered secondary metal recycler. The pretrial intervention contract requires him to enroll in the thinking for a change class and perform 25 hours of community service. A village of Calumet Grove man will lose his license for six months after blaming a possum for a Jeep crash in Florida's friendliest hometown. Enver Can Goke, 30, who resides at 7782 Southeast 186 Lone Oak Loop, had been driving the Jeep on December 12th when he crashed on Buena Vista Boulevard near the entrance to the village of Winifred. The vehicle was lying on its right side with both airbags deployed when the emergency personnel arrived on the scene, according to the arrest report of the Sumter County Sheriff's Office. Goke's hands, legs, and face were covered with blood due to a nose injury. He claimed he Possum ran out of the road in front of him. Prior to the crash, Goke struggled through field sobriety exercises and provided breath samples that registered 1 or 0. 0.151 and 0. 0.145 blood alcohol content. He was arrested and charging with driving under the influence. Last month in Sumter County Court, Goke pleaded no contest in the case. Two convicted sex offenders have returned to the villages for the Easter holiday. Both sex offenders, 45-year-old Jonathan Pence and 30-year-old Stephanie Seabury, share the distinction of landing back behind bars after quietly moving in with their parents in Florida's friendliest hometown. Pence was convicted in 2000 of lewd and lascivious molestation involving a minor between the ages of 13 and 15 in Oakland, Michigan. He was also convicted of carrying a concealed weapon in 2000, as well as being convicted in 2005 of the armed robberies of gas stations and a radio shack in Canton, Wayne, and Westland, Michigan. Pence moved in with his parents in 2016 at 607 Shearwood, Street in the village of Winifred. He was arrested in 2017 on a trio of probation violations. Pence spent a month and a half behind bars at Sumter County Detention Center. He later relocated to Jacksonville. Go back over there. We don't want you around here either. Past week, Pence notified law enforcement he has registered a temporary address with his parents here in the villages, according to Florida's Department of Law Enforcement. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Just thanks. Seabury likewise reportedly a temporary address last week at his home of his parents at 362 Aletza Lane in the village of LaBelle North. <laughs> God. Seabury has been an English teacher at Fred Five for Three. I remember her. Sex with a student. Uh, middle school in Camden, Delaware, when she was arrested in 2014. She lived in an apartment complex in Dover, Delaware, where she had sex with a 13-year-old student. Seabury's mother posted her $10,000 bond. Seabury, who has since relocated to Georgia, still faces a pending charge of violating her sex offender registration. She is scheduled to enter a plea in the case Tuesday in Sumter County Court. Easter is recognized as the peak of grandchildren's season in the villages with more youngsters here than any other time of the year. That's because of camp villages. We have a camp villages that, that's sponsored here. And if you people haven't gotten the idea here of what's going on, you better wise up. I'm telling you, these pictures should be taken and put in a locked, clear box up at every family pool, swimming pool, so that these faces can be seen. And if, they, and if anybody sees these people in any of those pools, they should be calling the sheriff's department immediately to have them extricated. That's just my feeling, and I'm never going to change it unless somebody comes up with a better idea. How about it, Rohan? How about it, Mr. Rohan? Do you really care about the retirement people here and the grandchildren and the safety of everybody? Do you really? You let everybody walk in and out of the pools with no nobody checks.
You say you do, but you don't. At the end of this news video, it's been a while, but we're at the end of the snowbird season, and there's a collection of um, bad parking villages. And I know you guys get a kick out of that. So um, at the end of the video, uh, I'll, I'll put pictures of all the bad parking, and then you can guess you know, what's wrong with that parking. So some people don't see it. You have to look sometimes twice, but all kinds of bad parking around here, especially during snowbirds. I'm not blaming snowbirds for all of it. I seem to think I do. I'm not. I'm saying it's drastically increased, though, that when snowbirds come down, because they feel like, and a lot of visitors feel like, this is Disney World, and they can just do whatever they want, and you know they, they, they treat it that way. The man who allegedly stole $3,000 from his mother's safe while she was at church is also a suspect in ramming a pickup into the Fruitland Park City Hall. People, these guys and girls cannot be cured of this. They can't be treated. you got to put them away. The woman who has made it her mission to find photos of Florida veterans killed in the Vietnam War gave an update on the Virtual Wall of Faces project to the John Bartram chapter of the Daughters of the Revolution at the group's latest meeting. The Virtual Wall of Faces project is dedicated to honoring and remembering each of the 58,000 plus fallen veterans whose names is inscribed on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. Beth Braun, a resident of Village and the DRE Chapter's 2019 Community Service Award winner has been actively searching throughout Florida and neighboring states to obtain photos of the young soldiers from that war. She has located the photos of 777 of the 1,857 Florida victims of the war. Braun shared some of her experiences in contacting relatives some 50 years after their loved ones have died. Some of the relatives searched for the photos and provided them. Many photos were received from newspaper obituaries, and many more came from high school yearbooks. She worked with school librarians, newspapers, and in many cases, cemeteries to find family members who might have a photo to add to the collection. Lake Miona sports pools will be closed with extended maintenance. Furniture replacement rescheduled for Sunset Point Adult Pool. Colony College Recreation Center Sports Pool will be closed. Chula Vista Recreation Center and Adult Pool will be closed. Okay, that's going to be it. Don't forget, coming up next is going to be the Village's Bad Parking. I hope you enjoy. Don't leave your keys in the golf cart.